If gratitude transcends grace, then Thanksgiving is the day to celebrate all the blessings that we receive through the grace and love in our lives. And just as these wonderful traits nourish our soul, this special holiday nourishes our bodies and our hearts. And the overwhelming gratitude that we share with those who make our world a better place. Welcome to the Thistle Stop Cafe in Nashville, Tennessee. I'm Tai Chi. At 19, I was a superstar and I was lost inside. I left it all behind, switched continents and started all over. Years later, I found myself lost again, this time in the American dream. This is a story about awakening, about living the life you were created for, about going inward and discovering the joyous and purposeful person you and I are both meant to be. This is Waking Up in America. Hello everyone and welcome to Waking Up in America, our Thanksgiving special. As an immigrant to the United States, I would like to take a moment and acknowledge the opportunities and the freedom that America has given me, as well as to the many generations past and present. I also want to acknowledge the forgiveness and healing that has to take place in each of us when these opportunities and freedoms are not granted equally to everyone. This absolute necessity for recommitment from each of us requires the effort to stop making these mistakes of the past and awaken to our responsibility to live life with purpose, which is for all of us to bring love, compassion, and healing into our world. I like the image of American families gathering around the Thanksgiving table, but I often think about those who might be left out, the homeless and the broken. Thankfully, there are many of you out there who are making a difference every day. We've had the privilege of featuring a number of special people right here on Waking Up in America. People dedicated to welcoming those on the margins of our society into the celebration, not just on Thanksgiving Day, but every day of the year. Sandy Griffin takes care of the homeless in Nashville. Steve Rayner cuts hair at the halfway house. Lou Ross hangs out at the skateboard parks and connects with the kids that don't fit. Britton Kovac builds houses for the poor in Jamaica. And Megan McInnes works to celebrate these volunteer stories, bringing them to the media. Healing and Thanksgiving takes place every day here at the Thistle Stop Cafe, the community of women survivors of sex trafficking, abuse, addiction, and prostitution. Becca Stevens, our recent guest, founded Thistle Farms, where we're celebrating today, founded by the overwhelming act of love, which has the power to heal every soul. Here we are, having the best, perfect Thanksgiving tea party. Yes. And we have Doris, Susan, Donna, yeah. uh, Gail, and Jen. Yes. yes, good to be here. Okay, when I was introduced to Thistle Cafe, it was one of those meditation mornings. And I was very new to Nashville, mm -hmm. and the word of the day was hospitality. Mm. And I was, the entire hour, I was just in tears. There was such tremendous presence of gratitude and true hospitality. Like, I felt welcome. I felt, mm -hmm. I just needed to be here. I wanted to be here. And there was healing and gratitude. Mm -hmm. So, you know, Thanksgiving, we all kind of, stop, pause, or I hope most of us do, and reflect on what are we grateful for. And yeah. So I prepared three stories for you today. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to watch them now. Okay. All right. There's no lady that I know of that wakes up and just says, when I grew up, I'm going to be a prostitute. So the women have all suffered some type of childhood trauma or childhood molestation or something when they, before they go to the street. So mine was childhood trauma. One particular day, it was the most horrendous day of my life, and a very troubled family member came into our family home, severely injured my mom and, and shot my father. And I'm nine years old and I'm standing there and I'm thinking, oh my gosh, and I, I can remember to this day screaming and running over to my dad. And just as I got there, he fell. And he died that day. And my life, right along with him, died as I had known it. I found myself having a childhood addiction to marijuana at the age of 11. Mm. And that addiction quickly progressed. And by the time I was an adult, I had a full-blown crack cocaine addiction. 
and that addiction led me to the streets of Nashville. And that's where my entire life just down spiraled. So I was in my addiction for 26 years. And I walked the streets of Nashville for like 18 to 20 years. And I remember walking the streets and I would just trade myself. I trade myself to get out of the cold weather. I trade myself to get out of the hot weather. I trade myself because I had no, no self-value. All self-value and all respect had been taken from me through my addiction. And I was raped multiple times, and I was left in the ditch for dead, and I just had a horrible life out there. So one of the many times that I went to jail, I ran across Regina Mullings, and she was a really good friend of mine. So she was in jail that day, but not as an inmate as I was. She was in jail to bring a word of hope. She came from, mm. to, from yes. Magdalene to bring a word of hope. And she was letting me know that it, you can get your life back, you can change. So she gave me her number, and I remember scribbling that number down. And when I got out of jail, I went back to White House, Tennessee, and took my daughter's picture off the wall and scribbled my, the number for Magdalene on the back of the picture. I took that picture off the wall and I started calling Magdala. And Regina said, just keep calling because we have over 100 women on the waiting list. Just keep calling every day and we will move your name up if you see how sincere you are. So I would pray and I would call that number and pray and call that number. And then finally one day Regina called me and said, okay, you can come on in. And wow. I was in my bedroom thinking, oh my gosh, I'm going to Magdala. I thought, I know if I can just get there and sit still for, for 24 months that I know I can get my life back. So November the 9th, 2009, I went into the Magdalene house and I got my life back. Well, good. I want to thank you for the courage to share your story with us. Mm -hmm. I am so grateful. I'm grateful for my story. Thank you. So I'm actually grateful for my past, as horrible as it was. I'm grateful for it because I can never go back there. And whenever I am tempted to even think about doing something that I did in my past, I play the tape all the way out. And I remember just how bad it was. Just hearing myself talk about it, it brought back the feeling. So yes. I'm grateful. Yes. I'm grateful. Uh, what, what did you feel when you watched? It's just incredible. I can't even imagine, and I admire your courage. I'm so I look grateful at, you kept calling back. Mm -hmm. I look <laughs> at Doris now, and I see what you have done with your life. I see what you do here, the position you have, the courage you have um, to live like you live here and at your home. And I'm in awe of yes. you. You're my hero. Absolutely. What a tr tremendous Thank gift you. to give us, to uh, this glimpse into your soul and into your hard journey. And yet, through it all, you're able to sit here and be grateful and yes. healed and yes. accept the healing. So at the Thistle Farm, Farms, uh, and as a, as a graduate, and now as a thriving Thistle Farmer, mm -hmm. what are the two steps, emotionally and physically, that, that were your successes? that you now take forward into the world? You know, what I do here at this Farm, I'm one of the event coordinators, and that's such a privilege for me because I get to give back in a sense. So my job now is to contact people and see if we can come out, and I get to schedule events, and the ladies get to go out and tell their stories. And when you're able to tell your story, you're able to begin your healing process. So the ladies go out and tell their stories, and they sell the products, and that's very, uh, it's what we need here at the Safari School. The only way we keep our doors open is through the sales of our products and private donations. So I get to pay a big part in that and it makes me feel so good to think that I'm able to play a part in giving back to the very people who helped save my life. You know, because uh, when we do this, it makes more, it makes it easier for us to be able to bring more women in. Yes. I mean, I'm talking about women that I've never seen before. I don't know their faces. I don't know who they are, what color they are. None of that matters. I just know that the women are out there and they're lost and they deserve to find their way home. They need a sanctuary, a place to rest. When I came in, they gave me a place to rest. They did not say, what did you do? They asked me, what happened to you? Yes. So everyone deserves that. Yes, and that's why that healing was possible. What kind of places do you go to? when you send the ladies to talk and sell the products? I send out invitations and we usually, we go to people's homes okay. or we'll go to a church or to conferences or conventions. We even go to the office buildings and that nice. way we bring the products into them. It saves them time 
on going out and shopping and it gives them awareness because believe it or not a lot of people are not aware yes. of what goes on yeah. yes and exactly right. mm -hmm. that that awareness brings the healing that we all need and, and again thank you for the courage to all the ladies to be out there. Mm -hmm. When we come back, we'll watch the second story and we'll talk about where and how you can be a part of Thistle Farms. This episode has been brought to you by wakinguprevolution.com, helping people transform their lives through holistic life coaching, keynote presentations, and video and music programming. Visit wakinguprevolution.com for more information. My name is Jennifer Klinger and I'm from Dayton, Ohio. My title is Hospitality, and that is my favorite part. Um, I get to represent my sisters to share the mission of Love Hills. Born in Dayton, Ohio, um, mother love like none other. My father, post-traumatic stress from World War II and the Korean War, alcoholic, and his physical discipline was um, abusive and an uncle who would take me into dark closet and inappropriately, inappropriately touch me. And these were things that happened before five and, and, and up through, you know, 10. I ran away and I didn't stay just in Dayton, Ohio. I put my thumb out, was, you know, this is like 70s and, you know, sex, drugs and rock and roll. And you get out on the streets and you're a lost young child you immediately become a target for human traffickers and pedophiles. Every time I sold myself or put a drug in me, a piece of me died. 18 years IV heroin in and out of psych wards, jails, institutions. A lot of my friends died brutally out there and I've come to terms with that thinking that God decided they had enough. And even though it was a brutal death, they're home. They have no more pain. You know, it is a, um, it is seriously, a savage, brutal lifestyle. And I was stuck in such a dark place that I thought the whole world was against me and out to get me. And, and I'm finding out that that is so not true. It was just the places I was hanging out in. Um, you hang in dark places, your world's gonna be dark. So stepping from a dark place into a light place has not been easy, I can assure you. I don't recognize the woman who walked in in 2012. Who is that woman? And I was fighting love. Um, I was rejecting love because of my history. And because I was born of love, um, it was like I was not being myself. I was, and I had to find myself. Find your way home is um, our book in our spiritual principles. My home is not Nashville. It's not my apartment. My home is my heart. I had to find my heart and I had to open it to love, so. Mm. Thank you for opening your heart mm. and letting it fill with light. What was the part that brought you into that light? Unconditional, yeah. non-changemental, um, being able to tell my story without criticism mm. or being judged without being sentenced to jail. Um, yes, I did some horrible things. Um, just having to open my heart completely is still not easy. I mean, it's not completely open, but just gradually through this community, being able to speak it as Doris was saying, to speak your truth. Um, I, I can say that I have seen other videos of me and I'm never very accepting of them, but I actually see life in this one. Oh. I mean, I, this is the first time I'm halfway accepting of one of my videos because I can see that I'm starting to come alive here, okay? So, yeah. It's Isn't it what we're most thankful when we gather with our families and with our friends and sisters mm -hmm. to be grateful for that unconditional love? Mm -hmm. What's more? I feel alive, you know, through... Now, to love we will um, we will have these stories um, as uh, you know to to, sh to share in full because there's so much good stuff here that I want my viewers to know and I thank you again for sharing it with us. The part that we didn't hear in the story, and if you can tell us quickly, is about how the birth of your granddaughter provided healing. Well, it was. 
two granddaughters, and they were Zoe and Macy, um, born of my son and his fiancée, my son James and his fiancée Tara. And there was a wall between me and my son. The, um, my twins were born prematurely, um, 26 weeks, and Zoe only lasted three weeks. And Zoe means spark of life um, in Greek and even though she was on this earth for three weeks, she did the job God intended her to do, which was bust down that wall between me and my son because mm. I was able to be there for him when it was time for her to go. I, we got constant vigil by the bed and just the weeping and the sobbing, but I was there. I didn't have to say anything. I just had to be there for him for once in his life. Mm. The most crucial time in his life, I was there. Awesome. And, um, but finally, when she passed away, you know, it was just so gut-wrenching grief, I can't even describe it, but he stood up and he went to the incubator and he grabbed the receiving blanket that Zoe was swaddled in, mm. and he walked over to me and he handed me this blanket and that wall just crashed down. I have been so close to my son through the loss of my grandbaby, you know, and it's very, very tragic and we're still... But I take this receiving blanket back here to Thistle Farms and go to the sewing studio, and our dear volunteer, <laughs> Gail here, takes it home and makes a quilt. So now Macy, the surviving twin, is swaddled in Zoe's, oh. the one she was swaddled in, plus it is the blanket that he healed me and my son. That blanket means so much. It was such a gift. And um, I just don't even think you can even grasp, you volunteers, yes. how much you give to us. Right. And I am so grateful for all of our volunteers and all of your love and all of your time. Getting love from a complete stranger is unusual for me. Lo yeah. Strangers right. never gave me love before. Right. It's like, right. it was undignified treatment. And sure. just, yeah. just to have yeah. it just it's true. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Glow from you. Well, I mean. Gail, what were you thinking? What were you feeling what, when you were doing, making the blanket? Well, at first she came into the studio and said, can you do something with this? <clears throat> and I said, sure. And so I thought about what I could do simply but beautifully. And so I took it home and I did a very simple baby quilt. Um, and I prayed over it as I sewed it. And I brought it back and turned it over and said, here's your blanket, here's your quilt. And I never it fell apart. <laughs> and so my, my son beautiful. and his wife are just, was undone by it too. And so you can get <coughs> healing from some of the most tragic events in your whole life. And, mm, and we will always grieve the loss of our loved ones, but we, those left standing must dance. We yes, know, we and must you dance. Were, were the shirt love heals and love heals, mm -hmm. and this is such an amazing testimony of this place. And uh, when you know, that's how this is how I feel about everything about every product that comes out of Thistle Farms. Mm -hmm. It's filled with that love that Gail and Susan and all these mm -hmm. volunteers mm -hmm. and the women yeah. in the partner mm -hmm. uh, companies, right, right? Oh, sure. globally, mm -hmm. put of themselves. And then when you use them, it heals you too. I yeah. hope there are many meaningful conversations at the Thanksgiving tables all over yes. the world, <laughs> right. in America, right. this week. When we come back, we'll hear one more story. Stay with us. This episode has been brought to you by WakingUpRevolution.com, helping people transform their lives through holistic life coaching, keynote presentations, and video and music programming. Visit WakingUpRevolution.com for more information. Hi, my name is Donna Dozier. I complete my two years, October the 25th of 2015, and I am so grateful. And until I came here to Nashville and um, in Magdalene and worked at Thistle Farm, I had no idea of who I was. Every time I tried to stop, I couldn't fix it because I didn't know what was wrong. The most messed up thing about it is that I was living two lives. You know, there's a lot of people like, um, I never really was homeless because I had a mother. My mother was still there, and I had to try to look good on this side for this side, and then I had my selfishness. Oh, you know, after I done cleaned up and helped everybody and do it, everything, you know, I deserve on getting high. I was, I was caught up 
not knowing what to do. I was caught up not knowing what was wrong with me. I was caught up on um, thinking that I'm alone. I was caught up thinking that I'm just the victim of everything until I got here. It took me a while, you know, I'm 58 when I got into the program and I'm 60 now. And um, the thing is, is that when you get at a certain age, you're kind of like, you know, it's like you're, um, what can you say? It's like, it, it's, it's not easy for you to take direction or anything like that. So me learning how to humble myself with the love that I received from this family, every worker here. And, uh, you know, uh, it, it taught me to humble myself and to love me and let me know that it's not too late. Just because I'm this age don't mean that it's too late for me to, you know, be loved and show love back. So I learned to, uh, to give my respect and I learned to uh, respect myself and it feels so good, I'm telling you. And I learned that, you know. I was able to get my respect back for myself. I learned how to love myself. And that way, I learned how to really, truly love my daughter, my mother, and other people. So, I've always had that really embedded in my heart. And I'm grateful for that. All right. <laughs> oh, Donna. <laughs> Thank you. It's never too late to feel mm. good for yourself and just give us feel respect. Thank you. Thank you. So good to have you here with us. <laughs> and thank you for sharing your story. Thank you for asking me to share it. Tell me that one thing that what you do here now, and congratulations at graduation. <laughs> this is like most recent graduate. Right. How does what you do here, day by day, reflect your journey? It reflect my journey. Um, when I get out of the bed, I don't procrastinate. <laughs> I don't procrastinate. I look forward of going to, 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 um, Another thing, too, I did, like the two years, I never completed anything mm. ever in my life. So when I completed the two years and then I got my license, I've done that. I look forward to completing something. And when I come to work here, I have the most loving boss, and I, I do. She's so loving. Mm. And um, she listens to me. And she young. She listened to me. She let me talk crazy and do whatever I was saying to do. And she knows my passion for cooking. I always say, when I go in that kitchen, I don't say I like to cook. I say, I love to cook. Yeah. I say, Courtney, let me tell you something. If somebody tell you they like to cook, that means they can't cook. They got to say they love to cook. So it's, it's teaching me how to, to just, I'm just proud. And, mm. and she, poetry night. She, she, I share things with her. Susan, mm -hmm. I thank her. Mm -hmm. Was it last year when I first spoke to her? She allowed me to read something to her, and I did. And she told me how great it was. And mm -hmm. oh man, I and I loved her for that. And yes. that just encouraged me. It taught me not to procrastinate yes. and to sit proud. And I do. And mm -hmm. get up every morning, morning. with my heart. Mm. In my body this time, yes. and not in tell, the bed. Tell us that poetry, please. Uh, this is how I feel too. When I wake up in the morning, my heart is still laying in the bed. I get the children ready for school, bud. My heart is still laying in the bed. I get dressed for work, but my heart is still laying in the bed. The routine of life goes on and on, but my heart is still laying in the bed. Self-worth, please find me. And that's what happened. I found my self-worth through this farm and the love of yeah. each and every face that I see here. I'm telling you, I'm a, I feel good. I love you for even wanting to do this interview. You have showed me love. Now I'm proud. I don't procrastinate. 
I, the gifts that I know God gave me, I'm ready. I'm, I got to help somebody. Look, you don't have to do nothing real big. I can smile at somebody mm -hmm. and that can yes. brighten up their day. Yes. I can hug them. I can kiss on them. And I could just say a kind word. Mm -hmm. And that's all I want to do. Yes. And you just saying it makes us all mm -hmm. right, <laughs> want that's to all do I that do. little step. You know, shine, I used shine. to sit and dream about how I want to sit up and just, just, man, I'm doing everything that I want to do. <laughs> yes. And that's just <laughs> smile and, mm -hmm. and welcome a person in yes. and, yeah. you know. And thank you for saying it's never too late, okay? Never. never too late. No, it's never too late. The only wow. thing I had to do was humble myself. Humble and it wasn't myself. easy at mm. first. Yes. I fought every tooth of the way. They don't know. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's never too late. I am 60, mm. and I'm learning every day, and I'm proud. I don't look back. Yes. I don't look oh. back. I, when I look back, I look how God kept me to be able to talk yes, and help yeah, somebody that's today. Yes, that's oh, a yes, yes yeah, that's I know true. so <laughs> much to be thankful yes. for. And, and Gail and Susan, thank you. You represent thank the you. volunteers yes. that um, do, do so honor. much work. Mm -hmm. It is an mm -hmm. honor to be here with these women. Mm -hmm. What are you uh, most thankful for with this opportunity that brought into your life? It's been healing for me, amazingly. I love coming here and giving time and giving love to these women who so deserve it yes, she does. and who give so much love back to me, yes. unconditional love, who don't really know anything about me either, mm -hmm. but it's, right. it doesn't mm -hmm. matter. Isn't that what we're all called to do? Mm -hmm. And sometimes yes. you, you said, mm -hmm. we make it so complicated yeah, and it's we so do. simple. Mm -hmm. yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. And it's so That's easy. It. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I do want to point out the, the candles and, and all these amazing things that uh, this Lafar has. Tell me about the candles. Gail. Well, the candles are hand poured and they are um, soy wax. So there's, when, they, when you burn them, there's no carcinogens. You're not breathing in harmful. Yes carcinogens, cancer-causing agents, and the wicks are all cotton. There's no lead filament. Mm -hmm. They burn for 36 hours. Um, what do they represent? They represent that little light from mm -hmm. when you're on the streets and yeah. you've got no hope left and you're mm -hmm. wanting to die and wanting to jump off the bridges. Something keeps you from not doing that. Mm -hmm. And I believe when I was standing on my bridge wanting to jump, the only thing holding me back was my sisters before me lighting that candle, that little spark. Yeah. Yes, yeah, this yeah, is the light yeah. so that everybody can find their way home. And like Doris, I, there's a woman standing on the bridge today. Mm -hmm. She is praying yeah. for some kind of miracle or praying to mm -hmm. die, mm -hmm. yeah. whichever mm -hmm. one comes first, but mm -hmm. she can't stand being where she's at right now. Mm -hmm. This light is for her and the millions of other lost souls who mm -hmm. can't find their way home so that yeah. they can find their way home to their hearts and yes. get up out of bed with their heart and their body. You know? yes. 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 We are the light yes. in the world. Yes. <laughs> thank you. Thank you, ladies. Thank you. Thank you. It's All been lovely. You. I've yes. had a Love fabulous you. Thanksgiving. And yes. Gratitude. We're going to have some pie. The best. Yes. <laughs> Let's finish. Let's finish. <laughs> Let's finish. <laughs> it's been it fabulous. So, so Donna wrote the song for us. I think it should be Thanksgiving anthem. <laughs>
arm, I found the help that I needed. They had showed me so much love, and that's when I began my healing. Love heals, love heals, love heals. For more inspiring stories, please visit us at wakingupinamerica.net and reach to us via social media. And do get the best Christmas gifts and gifts for any time of the year at thistlefarms.org. Have a blessed holiday, everyone.